How are you, my friend? Are you not feeling well? No. My friend is a doctor. He can take care of you. Don't go there. She, she, he gave me a, an E. Now, now, Watson, take care of him. Can't talk. Wait for the coppers. Are they coming? My eyes are crying. Uh, no. Go find them too, mister. I'll stay here and keep an eye out. Go! No, I must await my friend. Ah, here he is. Watson, are you there? How are you? Uh, fine, Holmes. And you? What happened? Hello, sir. Where are we, Watson? In Whitechapel, Holmes. This must be Dorset Street. You don't seem very well. Do you need something? Indeed, Watson. Some clay, a great big piece of clay. I would ask for some wine, too, but as you know, I taste nothing but melodrama. What is over there? A trip from which you will never return, Watson. Trust me, don't go there. A trip? Behind this door? In this room? It's not strictly a door, it's more of a portal, a threshold. And what lies behind it is not the mortal realm, Watson. It is a place beyond time and space, the gift of a frantic artist who made use of his talent in order to grant us access to his world, Watson. Beyond that threshold is an abyss. Hell. The police won't take long to arrive, and the last thing I want is to waste precious time on them. Could you lead me out of this area and take me home? You should come and eat, Holmes. Mrs. Hudson has worked wonders. The joint has been cooked medium rare. If only you would tell me what was in the courtyard. The answer, Watson. The answer, Holmes? Yes, the answer to a question that you asked me a few weeks ago. And how the devil can the answer to a question I asked you be found in that courtyard? And what question are you referring to, Holmes? How our killer set about reaching the height of horror by taking another victim, Watson. Did I not tell you that I wanted to avoid melodrama? Do you mean to say that... Yes, that's what was in that room. You helped towards the colour. All that's missing is the odour, but I shall let that pass. The mutilations almost all resulted in large removals of flesh. My photographic memory noted them all in great detail, the shape, size and location. And thanks to the softness of this clay and your medical knowledge, I believe we can attempt to determine what is missing from this lady. Don't you think we should wait for the medical examiner's opinion? Surely not, Watson. This massacre has gone on long enough. I can assure you that I will do everything in my power to get our hands on Jack the Ripper before this night is out. Watson, we shall reconstruct the body of this poor woman and inspect it in detail as well. Your help as a medical man will be invaluable. Holmes, I... I feel a bit unwell. Well, I understand. I will manage on my own. Her throat was slit just like the others. The wound is particularly deep. There were incisions in the rib cage, as if to inspect the lungs. The liver was neatly removed. organ is missing, apparently. I must specify which organ this is on my list. There we are, Watson. We have examined everything. The heart is the only thing missing. Two uteri, a kidney, and now a heart. 
He had all the time he wanted in which to disfigure her, cut her up like a piece of meat, and yet took nothing but the heart. What do you think of that, Watson? Watson? I dread to think how you'd react if you saw a corpse. I'm returning to Whitechapel, Watson, to Isaacs. If the heart tells you to come with me, if the heart tells you a little wordplay there. <laughs> Let's go to the cobblers. Let's go to the cobblers. Beep, beep. Evening, Mr. Holmes. Good evening, Hardeman. Has Abraham Solomonovich still not reopened his shop? No, not that I know of. Have you heard anything about the latest murder? Certainly there is talk of nothing else. Poor girl. I hope they catch the bastard who did it. Who do you think that could be? A madman, that's for sure. Everyone in the area is pinning it on a Jew. But I don't believe that for a second. Why? Because Jews don't like blood, you see. They're not allowed to eat it, and they have to drain the meat before cooking it. It's true that they eat animals, but they are fanatical about all kinds of silly things. I don't know much about their rituals and all, but I know that a Jewish butcher can't just do whatever he pleases with his knife. He has strict kosher rules to follow. You seem to be very well informed. Well, I buy my meat from them too. My clients don't care whether the meat comes from Jews or not. Cats eat it regardless. And let me tell you, I'd go as far as to say that I may even have more faith in a Jew, because even if they don't eat all the offals, a Jew inspects them to see if the animal was in good health. Lungs, for the most part, and as they make up most my cat's meat, you can see the connection, right? Jews are allowed to eat offals? Oh, yes. They eat calf kidneys, I think. How big is that? A calf's kidney? Ah, oh, well, that depends if it's fresh or if it's been marinated in brine or cooked. When fresh, are they as big as a human kidney? They would be, yes. You know, Mr. Hardyman, it's lucky for both of us that the murder that took place in your mother's courtyard was only the Whitechapel killer's third. Had it been the first, I wouldn't be thanking you as I'm doing now for all of this important information. Goodbye and take care. If you say so. Right, farewell, Mr. Holmes. Let's go to the cobblers. Good evening, Mr. Solomonovich. Evening, Mr. Holmes. If you've come about the business of my cousin, I hate to say... Before you respond to my request, I must ask you to answer this question of the utmost importance. What offals are Jews allowed to eat? Well, the same as you. Kidney, heart, liver? Yes. How are they prepared? Kidneys are boiled, heart is often finely sliced and cooked on a skewer, and liver is always grilled. These offals, do they come from cattle? Yes, beef or veal. And eating non-kosher food would be a grave affair for a Jew, isn't that right? Yes, it would be very serious. But what are you getting at? If I were to tell you what I'm thinking, Mr. Solomonovich, you would pull out your own eardrums to not hear the end of my sentence. It goes against the beliefs of hundreds of members of your community, and for some, perhaps even worse. I will ask you one last time before involving the authorities, who I assure you will be far less discreet than myself. Do you know who the second Joseph is, the Aldgate Butcher, who your cousin knows from the Imperial Club? His name is Joseph Hyam Levy, but I don't know where he lives. I know nothing about him other than he's a member of the Imperial Club on Duke Street. 
That street is after Church Passage, coming from Mitre Square. Am I right? That's it. Thank you. You have been an enormous help to both of us. Now, listen carefully. I need you to find four or five strong men among the members of your family who you trust wholeheartedly and to wait here with them until my arrival or you receive a message from me. Is that clear? But if you will tell me... Later, Mr. Solomonovich. Later. Let's go to the Imperial Club. There's the Imperial Club. Let's see if I can find Joseph Hyam Levy.